Well, I recently ran across a calculator that'll estimate your lifespan. It's called a life expectancy calculator. Basically, you punch in some basic information about your age and health, and it estimates how long you have left to live. Now, on the other side of things, we have these billionaires who are alive today who are just obsessed these days with living longer, much longer. And they're trying to stretch the most out of the length of life, even though we all have kind of the similar time here on Earth. I mean, even when we hit middle age, there's something that happens deep within us where rather than thinking about how many years we've lived, we start to think about how many years we have left. Now, I know this is all a little morbid, yet in the scriptures, we see that Psalm is commenting on this, this kind of stuff in the context of wisdom. They tell us things like to number our days. Uh, we read statements like, and it came to pass. In Psalm 39, 4 and 5, uh, the psalmist writes, Lord, remind me how brief my time on earth will be. Remind me that my days are numbered, how fleeting my life is. You have made my life no longer than the width of my hand. Now, do that. take a look at your hand for a moment. You might want to just hold it up and look at the span of your hand, from your thumb to your small finger. It's not that far, is it? And so the question is, why would he write something like this? I mean, at first glance, it could seem pretty depressing. But on second thought, this could give us context to our pain. Now, C.S. Lewis penned that we all have this yearning, not of this world. In other words, that there's more to this life than even just this life. And as followers of Jesus, we learn, uh, as we follow him, to live with an eternal perspective, we call it. It gives us new context or perspective to whatever we're going through in the moment. So if we'll just adjust our personal clock to synchronize with eternities, we'll start seeing things on earth a whole lot differently. So what this does is it gives us the capacity to hope, to live each day rather than simply wish them away. See, hope has a time and it's much greater than just the here and now. So when Jesus said, blessed are the meek, for they inherit the land, Jesus is asking his hearers to lengthen their perspective, to understand that God has a plan and God will see to it that his plan will be accomplished. You know, our job in the meantime is to have faith in him and in his goodness and to bend our will to God's, even bending our timeline to God's, which is sometimes not easy. But if we do, we'll live with hope which in turn gives us this remarkable poise and strength no matter what we're facing. So whatever you're going through today, remember, it doesn't get the final word. God does. So keep hoping.